Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Benovich here. It's almost uh, 10 p.m. Thought I'd do a quick little update here on the weather event we have because we've got a little bit of everything. We're gonna have like three seasons in one day and some of us are gonna see heavy rain, some folks are gonna see severe weather, and some folks are gonna see the first batch of wintry weather. So kind of an interesting setup. Here's the radar right now. You can see what's going on. We've got some heavy rain to our south and east. And again, none of this is severe. It's just been some moderate rain at times. What's interesting though, as you watch this, you see this development taking place back here. This is the upper level system, which is coming in from the west that's starting to develop and produce some showers. Let me show you the wider view. You kind of see how this thing is organizing. It's really you know, this is kind of a really fascinating thing to watch as a meteorologist because you've got an upper level low here. You've got a surface low here. They're attached by a little trough. You've got a warm front somewhere in here and a cold front right here. Now this warm sector, this is where the severe weather is. That's likely gonna move pretty much up um, I-95. Um, and some of our southeastern counties will be closed. And I'll show you why uh, those counties are bear watching a little bit. There's also the possibility along this main front that we could see some strong storms. But the big story everybody's excited about, this upper level low, the air is cooling. It's creating dynamic cooling. That's a big burst of snow. Now, if this was a slower moving system and the ground wasn't as warm, this would be an epic storm. But because of the speed that it's moving, as well as the potential that it's going to be in and out very quickly, it's going to deter some heavier amounts. But you could see that upper low on the water vapor loop, just a very impressive um, looking setup. But as I mentioned, there is a low end severe weather risk. Now, I think this is a little overdone. I actually think it's more probably in here only. Um, I, I'm not buying that right now. It doesn't mean it couldn't happen, but I just think that's very unlikely. Tomorrow, this makes sense. This is where I expect the risk to move. And in fact, if I were to, you know, continue this, this would be this would have been the area I would watch overnight into early tomorrow morning. So, you know, Brad, why aren't you super worried about the SPC has that? Well, Look at the tornado parameter, which is the ingredients for tornadoes. We'll go into the overnight hours and you can see some of the ingredients coming north, but they don't really quite get here. In fact, they're pretty low everywhere except for three counties. So these are the three counties that I really want to watch. That is a pretty significant uh, tornado parameter there, about two and a half to three. So there are some ingredients getting pretty close to our area, but you notice I-95 is right here. I think that's more where we're going to see the risk. The rain that's falling over us now is likely going to keep uh, the instability at bay. There's tons of wind shear for severe weather. We just don't have the low level fuel that we normally would get. But along the track of that low, we're also going to see the risk for flash flooding in that line. So let me show you quickly the uh, winter weather outlook here. You can see all the winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories. It includes all the mountains and the foothills. Now, it doesn't mean there won't be some snow east, but the impacts will be be, be pretty low. Um, if we look at the short range guidance, I can show you the future cast here for the next couple of hours. And you can see the heavy rain moving in. Um, notice the risk for severe storms pretty low except for these we got to watch these down here this is nothing to worry about up here that's in the that's in the cooler more stable air um, so that's not likely going to be an issue down to the southeast is where we're going to have to watch and you can see the low pretty much tracks right over us by tomorrow morning that snow's flipping over in the mountains and again that's going to be a burst of really heavy snow but look how short-lived it is it's in and out fairly quickly and yes there is a small chance especially in here we could see a brief mix over to snow but then it's out so quickly, I don't think it's gonna to amount to much. The further north you go, the better the chance, and the higher elevations you go, the better your chance. But you can see by the afternoon, it starts pushing out fairly quickly. So that's a look at the short range guidance. Let me show you a little broader view um, of this thing unfolding. You can see how it tracks right over us tonight and around three, four, five in the morning. If we're gonna get severe weather, that's the time frame: four, five, six o'clock in the morning. And then the snow you know, gets in and out of here fairly quickly so let's look at the future cast with temperatures because this will be the key part where's the warm air that's where we're going to see severe weather where's the cold air that's where we're going to see wintry weather so we'll go into the overnight hours i'm going to stop this around three four in the morning let's stop right here so you see the areas where we're close to 60 all right these areas here okay that's that's ripe enough air for severe weather but notice charlotte north 40s and 50s that temperature, that's not going to be conducive for severe weather. So that's why the folks in the Sandhills, Sherrod or Rockingham, Wadesboro, um, out in that area towards Southern Pines, those are areas you got to watch carefully up to Raleigh. Um, but I really think it's going to be just to our east, like I-95 east. And then you see in the morning, the temperature's falling. Here comes. So even if the snow does fall, look at the temperatures. This is This is not really conducive for anything sticking or staying snow very long. It's going to be, I always like to say, white rain 
<laughs> it's when you get wet snow that basically is melting on the way down and melts on impact. And that's kind of what we're going to see tomorrow um, as the system moves out. And you can see tomorrow night into Tuesday morning is probably going to be our biggest issue because as we go into the overnight hours tomorrow night, those temperatures everywhere are going to drop below freezing. So any wet road surface from snow, melting snow or rain is likely going to refreeze on Tuesday morning. And that means potentially we're going to have some icy spots. So here's my manual map. I always like to do the manual map here to show you kind of what I'm thinking right now. And if I show you real quickly, you can see I'm, I'm going to higher peaks, six to nine, four to six, generally above 2,500 feet. And then there's a pretty tight gradient. You come down in elevation, it's going to drop off. Now, some areas like South Mountain State Park, there might be a little uptick and up here towards the, um, the brushies. Um, some of those areas, that, you know, any elevation is going to help you with snow. So any height, I mean, like my Pilot Mountain, you know, even even down here towards, you know, um, Crowder's Mountain, that might just high enough that there might be a little burst at, the, at those higher elevations. But for the most part, across the Charlotte area and, and the Piedmont, I'm not anticipating much more than just a lot of cold rain falling across the area. And just to kind of reiterate that, I will show you um, what the model guidance is showing. I'll play this real quickly. And this is our snowfall potential from our future cast model and I'll stop it right there and I can move around a little bit and you can see the highest amounts are right here in the Smokies. Some of those are approaching a foot. Um, Roan Mountain, Beach and Sugar Mountain right there. Um, you see the areas east of the mountains that have potential for snow? It's a little bit right in here, Interstate 40. So that would be the area I'd watch to see if we're gonna see a burst of snow. Now, the big story in this tomorrow is gonna be these temperatures falling like a rock. I'm going to show you these temperatures during the during the morning or a high temperature is going to be whatever it is at midnight tonight and then it's just going to be downhill um, from there. So real quick look at the impacts uh, mainly in the mountains here we're looking at a, a medium impact of snow but the refreeze is going to be the real issue and there is a small chance of this wet heavy snow in the mountains we could see some scattered power outages um, so that's always something to keep a close eye on. Let me move, whoops, let me move my head out of the way here so it's a little bit easier to see this. Um, I'll move my head right up here. So you can see right below me the power outages. Yeah, there's a potential we could see some of those in the mountains with some wet, heavy snow. For the Piedmont, I almost didn't want to put any, but I do think we'll see some wet flakes, very low impact. But again, Monday night into Tuesday morning, black ice, anything wet, even if it doesn't snow at all, we're going to see a freeze on Tuesday morning. And that potentially could lead um, to the potential of some black ice and some slick bridges and overpasses. So that's the latest. I'll be on tonight after the game, which will probably be 1130 midnight, depending. Um, and if there's any updates, I will do them first thing tomorrow morning. Be safe out there tonight. We'll keep a close eye on that severe weather risk. But in the mountains, this is the first snowfall of the season. It's a month into the season, a little late, but at least it's finally going to snow.